This is Justin from CompCard again, and today we're going to show you how to rebuild your rear brake caliper. Um, a couple reasons for rebuilding um, your rear caliper could be if you're having continual brake issues. Uh, maybe you've tried a different set of brake pads, you've tried scuffing up your actual physical rotor, um, maybe you've you followed our uh, brake bleed video and you've rebled your brakes, but you're still having an issue. Um, that could obviously mean then that there's something internally going wrong with your rear brake caliper. So I would recommend at that point, obviously for safety and performance, um, it's time to, to rebuild your caliper. Um, so the first step um, that we would recommend when you want to rebuild it is actually remove it from the chassis. Um, assuming hopefully you have enough time, it's a lot easier to, to rebuild the caliper away from the chassis. You don't have all the other components here to bother you. So the first step is you need to disconnect the brake line where it comes into your caliper. On the comp card it uses a banjo type fitting which is right here on the uh, lower front part of the caliper. Most all calipers will have one, some calipers have two lines coming to it. Um, you're going to want to remove those first. So on the comp card we're going to take a 13 mil wrench and we're going to take this banjo fitting, loosen it, just crack it barely and we'll go ahead and unscrew it. As we start to unscrew it, you're going to have brake fluid that's going to want to come out of your caliper, right? So I have this little baggie here which we typically use. You can even put a rag here if you want. You don't want to get the brake fluid on your, your frame. If it gets on the paint, it's going to ruin it. So um, we'll go ahead, we'll unscrew this fitting right before we get it to kind of come out. We'll just put it right in this bag and this will keep our banjo fitting in there and our two ceiling copper washers in there which makes it really nice, keeps everything clean. So that's that, you don't have to worry about brake fluid dripping anywhere. Now depending how your caliper is mounted on your chassis you need to remove that. Typically it's, it's two bolts, a top and a bottom bolt, it could be a different bracket. On the comp card it's two 8 mil cap head bolts that uh, hold it on from the back side which, which require a, a 6 mil T handle. So we'll go ahead and we'll break both those loose. Break this bottom one loose. And once they're loose, I think we can go ahead and yeah, thought we could. We'll go ahead and get this top one off real quick. Go ahead and spin it out. Make sure you always put your hardware somewhere so when you go back to assemble, you're not asking yourself where your bolts are at. So get this bottom one off. Perfect. This is perfect. Now you got your caliper removed from your chassis. You're ready to take it over to a workbench or a solid surface and start the rebuild process. Now that we've successfully removed the caliper, we have it over to a good, good solid work surface here. It's time to start the rebuilding process. So, depending on how your pads are mounted in your caliper, whether they have screws with retaining springs, we're going to have to remove the brake pads. So, for us, these are just uh, two straight pins with a little clip on each end. So, we're going to again pull out both clips, set those next to each other so we don't lose them, pull out both pins. And again, depending on what type of system you have, if you have the screws, once you take the screws out, the pads will fall out. Here, this system is a monoblock system on the comp cart, and the, the pads are just held in there by magnets with inside the piston. So we're going to pull out our two brake pads. We're going to set those aside. Now, the question is, how do you get the pistons out that are inside here, right? Well, it's actually a pretty easy trick. You're just going to, we're going to take a little bit of compressed air, and from the inlet where our brake line went, which is where the fluid would pass, we're just going to inject some air and the air is going to force the, the uh, brake pistons to come out of their pockets. That's going to allow us to get inside there and replace the rubber pieces. Make sure you don't have your fingers in here when you go to put the compressed air in there. These will come out very sm fast, smack your finger and, and you're not going to be very happy. So I just put a little piece of cardboard when, when we do it just to kind of help them from uh, banging off of each other. Get this right here. We're just going to go just like this. And you heard that big snap, so if your finger's in there, you're going to be in trouble. So, we got both of these that came out. Sometimes they come out a little crazy, so we got one piston. O-ring came out. This one didn't quite come out all the way, so we'll give it another shot of air. Popped right out. 
So we got our two pistons out, and we have our cal or we have our rear caliper here. No pistons in there, right? So that's nice. You have your two pistons right here. This type here has a magnet in each one of them that's held in with an internal snap ring. So if your magnet would be damaged, you can take this snap ring out, the pair of snap ring pliers, put a new magnet in it. Um, other types that have magnets might not be held in with a snap ring, might be a little screw. Same sort of principle, pretty easy. So kind of just inspect these and make sure there's no gouges or there's any burrs on here. Um, you know, that could be caused from maybe one of your seals going bad and these are actually rubbing up on the inside of the aluminum on your caliper and that could have been maybe one of your problems. So we had one O-ring that came out already. Sometimes to fish out the, the other O-rings, what you need to do is just get a little tool like this, get it at any sort of hardware store, find where your O-ring's at inside here, and you just kind of work it out, just like that. Pretty, pretty simple, there's, there's not a lot to it. So those are O-rings there, O-ring there, and our second O-ring on this side that didn't come out. So there are your O-rings. It's always good too when you take this apart, depending on your manufacturer, take out one side at a time and line up the pieces, right? So you know exactly kind of how they came out. So when you go to reassemble it, there's no issues. Um, on the comp cart caliper, you're gonna have a thicker square uh, O-ring on the inside groove, and then there's a small outside groove which takes this, um, the smaller O-ring. So basically when we take it apart, a couple things you're going to want to notice is you're going to want to see if there's any tears, kind of rips, gouges, anything like that in, in your rubber seals. If there are, then that means the seal's not doing its job. It's not sealing. Um, that could be an issue. Also, when you want to look inside of here, our particular caliper is black anodized. Um, so if you see silver inside there or an area that is not anodized, that's most likely going to come from your piston actually making direct contact with the caliper body. Again, that's another sign that could be an issue. Um, this caliper, we're just doing a straight rebuild. We don't see any of those issues, so we're going to go ahead and just, you know, re put the parts back in the caliper, essentially. Um, one thing that you'll want to do, thankfully, since this caliper was new, there's a little bit of grease already on the O-rings and on the pistons. You want to use a little light grease, maybe like a lithium grease, so when you go to put the piston inside and you go to put the O-rings inside, they kind of fit in there and, and nothing kind of binds up. So we're going to go ahead and put these O-rings right back in here. Really simple. Same, same sort of concept as you would just put like an O-ring around maybe your beadlock screw or something. There's not a lot to it. Make sure you put the, the O-ring in the, in the right spot. So for here, there's two spots. It's, it's really simple to see, you know, one spot's machine narrower than the other spot. So, and you can tell that the difference in the, the O-rings here. So put the outside one in here. So that's in there. Pull the other one out here. Great. So we successfully got the O-rings back in. And then for the pistons, it becomes a little bit easier. You're just going to push them right back in. Make sure they have a little bit of light lithium grease on them is perfect. And they just slide right back in. So it's, you know, if they don't slide right back in, you probably may, maybe misaligned your O-ring or maybe you just need to put a little bit of grease on the, the piston itself. So we're just going to put the other piston in this side. Be a little careful of the magnets. Push it right back in. And that's essentially how you, re you rebuild a brake caliper. Um, on this caliper, on the comp cart one, and on a lot of the new monoblock systems, there's going to be what's called, um, well, it's like a, it's a nut, essentially, from when they machine it that blocks um, the outside piston. It's, these typically don't come loose, but it's good to take a tool and make sure that they're tight. We have one for uh, the comp cart type here that we make, and you basically just drop it inside your these machine holes here, and just give it a little bit of a snug, tighten it count or clockwise like anything else. Make sure that's tight. Not really going to have any issues. Now it's time to put the brake pads back in, which is pretty simple, and then we'll be able to mount this back in the chassis. In pretty much no time here. Get our pins in here. 
Yeah. It's also super helpful, again, when you take everything apart and you make sure to kind of lay everything out nice and neat. It makes it very easy to find, very easy to go back together just as you took it apart. So just like that, kind of rebuilt rear caliper, ready to reinstall it. So we've successfully remounted the caliper. We hand tightened our brake line on with our banjo fitting screw or whatever type of pipe fitting you may have on your system. Before we go ahead and give it the final tighten, one thing to remember is you don't want to over tighten this. If you do, you can over crimp your copper washer if that's what you have for your seal. Or if you have a straight um, uh, pipe fitting here, uh, like for more of a standard brake fitting, if you go too tight, you actually will put a hairline crack in your fitting and you're going to have big issues. So we're going to go ahead and tighten our banjo fitting just enough to where we get some good resistance and we feel it crimp up on the copper washer. Now we know we're sealed and we're ready for one final critical step now that we've rebuilt our system is we have to do a, a full brake bleed, um, which we've done that video before. So you can check that out and you'll be set, ready to go with your new rebuilt caliper.